Welcome to Between the Two Colonels. I am Kelly Shortridge, and uh, this is my guest, Halvor Flake. It's uh, very good to have you. So if you don't know who Halvor is, he just left uh, Google's security PR wing, Project Zero. Um, what would you describe your title as there? Uh, well, the former title was staff engineer. Okay. Um, and that sounds kind of unimportant. So what were you really doing? It was kind of unimportant, right? Um, I. I did go to P0 to actually do technical work then. Mm -hmm. Given that your your power is measured in headcount, I didn't have any headcount, so I was without of power. Course, of course, yes. And uh, you recently left the industry. Is that because you couldn't hack it anymore in InfoSec? I mean, everybody has always said that vulnerability development is a young man's game. Mm. Not that young anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't understand what half of these things are doing these days. Mm -hmm. So I have a conspiracy theory about you is that uh, I saw your talk at Zero Nights about AI, which is a huge buzzword if you're not aware, and uh, how AI is most important on the offensive side of things rather than defense. So my conspiracy theory is that you're talking about automating offensive work so you can then retire and just surf all the time. So I wouldn't mind the retiring and surfing, but automating offensive work seems to be really hard. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that AI at the moment has been most successful at producing papers. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure what I want to be in the business of producing papers at the moment. How come? It's hard work. It I mean, the, work. The, 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 the issue with producing papers is you end up arguing with the, the program committees and it goes back and forth. And if you talk to any academic, that's not a very fun job. It's not a fun job. So speaking of not fun jobs, what do you think about defensive AI then? Um, That's a good sign. I will <laughs> I'll perhaps quote Gandhi how he replied to the question of what he thinks of Western civilization. Mm -hmm. And his reply was, it could be a good idea. But? What are your caveats? Oh no, uh, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the caveats are that defensive, uh, well, the, the, the real caveat is any AI is always trained on existing data. Mm -hmm. And scientifically, even in the research community, we do not have a good way of training AIs in the presence of somebody that's capable of changing that distribution we're training on. Mm -hmm. Adversarial AI is not solved. Correct. So I, I totally agree with you. Uh, for the audience, can you explain a bit more why, kind of given how attackers behave um, and the kind of inherent nature, given your background on the offensive side, why relying on that sort of training data can be a death knell on the well, defensive side? Let's, let's think about not artificial, but real intelligence. Mm -hmm. You teach a kid how to understand your mother tongue. Like you teach the kid English when you speak to it when it grows up. Mm -hmm. um, and then one day you decide that you're going to speak Russian to the kid. Mm -hmm. How good do you think will the kid understand what you're saying? Not very well. That yeah. may be an issue then. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so my next question would be around buzzwords. So I know that you've been around the vendor hall floor at RSA. Um, obviously, AI and automation, all of those are some of the buzzwords. What's been your favorite, meaning least favorite, uh, tagline so far? So there are taglines that really have a, a very beautiful philosophical depth to them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, more secure everywhere. Yeah, that was you know, very, very open. Um, what does that mean to you philosophically? Yeah. I, I will tell you after one week silent retreat somewhere. Mm -hmm. Any other philosophically deep uh, taglines you saw? There was one that uh, went something like zero privilege, uh, zero trust privilege makes attack surface safe. Mm. I I think that's another one to ponder. It's, it's like good poetry. You can think about it, and every time you think about it, you discover new meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm wondering safe attack surface. How? Let's let's try to brainstorm. How would a company that you created architect safe attack surface? Yeah, it's kind um, of a beautiful juxtaposition, right? Yeah, and the zero trust privilege. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've heard about different forms of privilege and mm -hmm. checking privileges and stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, the the zero checkbox pri privilege. Checkbox privilege. That's right? that's a new tagline right there. That would be a good slogan. Um, can you probably raise a uh, ten million off of that position. Well, I do think you can raise pretty arbitrary quantities these days. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, uh, you just started a new company. Um, why did you choose the problem you chose? Now, the problem I chose was partially chosen because I was tired of being a cost center. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the reality is that security is almost always on the cost center side. And that's why everybody hates it. Um, and surprisingly, if you are a cost center, you need to be much more convincing on the sales side. Mm -hmm. There's some product categories that do not actually need many sales. Mm -hmm. And those are usually, like I, I have an internal model of this, three categories of products. The best category is the product you sell to somebody and he earns more money by buying it. Mm -hmm. That's why AdWords sells itself. Exactly. Uh, the second best uh, category is you sell a product and whoever buys it doesn't need to do anything, but he saves money. Mm -hmm. You also don't need to do a very strenuous effort at selling that. Um, I'm trying to think of some security companies like that. It's uh, I'm drawing a bit of a blank, but go on. <laughs> See? Uh, and then there's everything else, which requires a lot of convincing when doing sales. Uh, I happen to not be very good at convincing people. Mm -hmm. I, so, I can believe that. So I uh, decided to uh, do something which is even category one or two, and then I failed to come up with a product for category one. Mm -hmm. uh, and the best thing I could come up with is we will look at your code and make it faster and we keep like a chunk of the savings we generate. So what buzzwords apply to your new venture? Uh, Commissions-based cloud cost optimization. I like that. Uh, so optimize is definitely a big one this year. Cloud is naturally, if you're not a cloud security yeah. company, what are you even doing? I also like the literary alliteration between commissions and cloud that and cost. Cute. That is cute. Uh, there's no internal rhyming scheme from what I can tell though. No, it's co clo co mm -hmm. like, uh, well. So what, uh, what philosophical questions are you hoping people ponder with that? Is my cloud, well, uh, oof, ha, ha, ha. What is cloud? How, what, how is cloud? What is cloud and how many do I need? Um, yeah. Um, smokes and, like smoke and mirrors? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm drawing a blank on, on clever witticisms on this. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I think uh, we've learned that deep philosophical questions are very important for any marketing scheme. So That is true. I will have to find a marketing person to come up with a slogan though, because the commission's based cloud cost optimization. It does have the alliteration, I like that. Um, but speaking of cloud, so you have an interesting vantage point, um, having been at Google and then also being very prolific on uh, vulnerability research. What do you think is, I guess, if you had to predict for the next five years, where are attacks going, and particularly um, from a, I guess, more modern infrastructure and cloud world, does that have anything to do with how things will evolve? It's very, very difficult to make predictions about where attacks are going because attacks tend to only adapt when they have to. Um, and to some extent, attacks haven't, like, the, the intricacies of a modern exploit chain has changed a lot, mm -hmm. but the actual nature of the attack has not changed dramatically in the last few years, mm -hmm. primarily because organizations did not change the defensive posture dramatically. So making any prediction about where attacks are headed very much depends on what the defensive side is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not easy for me to make a good prediction of what's gonna happen there. That's fair. Do you think, uh, what are some of the more recent forcing functions as far as uh, getting attackers to actually improve themselves? Are there any you can identify on the defensive side? So, what I find most interesting is that if you look at the, the APT area, there used to be uh, an era of the expensive rootkit. Mm -hmm. And you can argue that all the different threat intel firms competing on writing the sexiest report on rootkits mm -hmm. have led to a change of strategy on the attacker side where the less elegant, more, like there's many more uh, implants these days that are built in a much cheaper manner because mm -hmm. you do not justify the investment into a super expensive rootkit anymore because a threat into a firm will eventually burn it and then you've lost all that investment. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting observation that to some extent, uh, cheap disposable implants are a much better investment for the attacker. And that was driven by bizarrely marketing efforts on the defensive side. See, InfoSec marketing does have a purpose. There you go. It's fair. It strikes me like a fast fashion, right? You have a, basically all these knockups of the designers and so fast fashion came about where you have these very quick kind of trend cycles. It sounds a little similar to go for it cost effective. Yeah, yeah, the, the entire, it, it's weird, right? Because you, like I grew up essentially admiring all these fancy 
vectoring techniques, and then you realize that from an economic standpoint as an attacker, it is much more cost effective to do smash and grab, expel as much as possible, as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. get caught, and then just discard that part of the infrastructure and uh, do it again. Do you think uh, changes in infrastructure, I don't know, whether containers or otherwise, like you said, disposing of infrastructure helps attackers in that way? Ooh, that's a tricky question. I'm not sure whether I can answer that. I think that re-imaging your infrastructure regularly, which is helped to some extent by containerization, mm -hmm. can, under certain conditions, make persistence on a machine harder. Mm -hmm. Not harder, more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering on the offensive side, like as we're developing these new technologies that obviously help out performance on the DevOps side or with SREs, um, is there any benefit that attackers can get as well? So I would argue that containerization is clearly good technology to use in a fuzzing cluster. Mm, okay. On both the defensive side and the offensive side, I guess. Um, Containerization is really about uh, making better use of existing resources, right? And um, you can argue that fuzzing is a classical resource constraint problem. Mm -hmm. So being faster uh, helps you find more stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. So next year at RSA, we're going to see some sort of containerized, uh, automated containerized fuzzing startup. I would be surprised if that isn't already a thing. I think that is a thing. I think I may have talked to somebody that was doing containerized fuzzing. Interesting. Okay. Um, and I mean, I think Google at some point did write about their, their internal fuzzing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And because everything on Google's in internal infrastructure is containerized, um, but there are advantages to, to being able to scale these things up. Absolutely. So with that, um, obviously you have very deep knowledge as info, in InfoSec. Is this a permanent breakup or temporary? Um, I do suspect that you can never truly leave. Sounds like a cult. Um, that is perhaps fair. Mm. Um, then again, I mean, I've, I've done 20 years, 21 years of reverse engineering by now. Mm. Um, I don't think it is possible to ever leave that truly behind. How come? Oh, you spend 20 years doing anything and it changes what you are. Um, so what are you, Alpha? Ooh. <laughs> um, baffled by this question. Too deep? Uh, too philosophical? Definitely too philosophical. Um, so when you say that you can't leave reverse engineering behind, what do you? What are you thinking as far as like moving to helping kind of this cloud pricing optimization, right? Yeah. Um, how does reverse engineering play into that? So it turns out that the work itself is really similar to, to security work, right? Because I, I, at some point I pondered, hey, what's the key key thing that I've learned during my years of doing vulnerability research and stuff? Mm -hmm. And the key skill is you read a lot of legacy code mm -hmm. and you try to understand it and you try to figure out what the problems are. Mm -hmm. And if you're in security, you then find security problems and nobody loves you, mm -hmm. unless you're on the offensive side. Um, whereas if you find performance problems and you make things cheaper and faster, mm -hmm. And people may actually be happy about you finding things. Mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps this is all a big ploy to be liked. I, I feel that on a very spiritual level. Right, yeah. Um. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on Between the Two Kernels. Any parting thoughts? I should be better prepared to answer your philosophical questions next time. Yes, well, uh, philosophy is just as much art as science, I suppose. Yeah, the, the joke amongst mathematicians is usually that mathematicians need only a pen, paper, and a wastebasket to do the work, mm -hmm. and philosophers only pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very deep. That's, a, that's another tagline you can use for your company. Pen and paper? Yeah, why not? You're optimizing pen and paper philosophical brainstorming, right? Using cloud-enabled services. I do understand now how you got to be here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, you have to live in the buzzwords and fully embrace them to survive this conference. I will try. I'll yeah. let you know whether I succeed. Yeah, please let me know. Yes, thank you. Thank you.